Aloha, my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing. I am fresh back from Murph, and while I was out there, I had a great chance to talk to Steve from CME CNC. And as many of you know, uh, CME CNC was where, I, or working with CME CNC is where I first started on YouTube, doing the Race to H2. A while back uh, that was hosted by Dustin and Jackman over on his channel. So I talked with Steve and now that they have their new printers out they have the Rostock Max V 3.2 as well as the Artemis I thought it might be neat to do another build series and go back to the roots. So this is going to be part one of the build series for this guy. Today we're going to open it up, unbox it, and check and make sure we have all the pieces. You ready? Let's do it. Okay, so let's pop open our knife and let's get this guy open. i um, going to try to keep things in view of the boom camera as much as I can for you as we do that. So let's cut the tape here on these sides. I'm assuming this side is up since it's the side with the packing stickers on it. Close our knife to be safe, and there we have it. So let's um, let's try to pull these out, and um, I will set them over here on the table at the side as we go through this, and um, we'll uh, we'll check out all our pieces. All right. Okay, so the first sheet that we have in here, or the first few layers, are the laser cut pieces to build the frame. Now this is the Rostock V 3.2 that we're going to be building. So let's go ahead and set these over here. Now, uh, arguably that's the most fun part of the build, is um, peeling off all the protective layering off all of the melamine pieces. Um, one piece of advice that I would offer that I've heard of other people trying in the past is that you never, ever, ever use water to get those off. Um, bad things will happen. You'll end up being cursed and um, all kinds of crazy things. So let's pull these boxes out for now. There's one box. Two boxes. Three boxes with a couple of laser cut pieces. We have more laser cut pieces here. Some of these look to be acrylic as well. We've got foam. We have our three rails. And we have one heavy big box. And that's it in here. So let's go ahead and close this up. Move this box out of the way and then we'll take a look inside of these boxes that we just pulled out. All right, let's go for the big box first since it is the heavy one. We'll uh, pop our knife back open and this time I might just leave it open and set it aside safely so that we can get to it for these other boxes. Okay, 
Okay, so let's try to get this into the camera here. Inside this first box, we have a CME CNC sticker. Congrats on your new printer. We have a QR code that takes you to the setup guide and a coupon here for a discount on other parts. Let's start seeing, oh, and of course, Mr. Blinky Eyes. So let's start popping our pieces out. We have the SE300 whip. Oh, whip. We have our arms. We have the extruder cold end set here. We have the base electronics pack with our power supply cord and a bunch of wiring. Belts. We have our top hardware bag. The Cheapskate, uh, Cheapskate 3 pack, which is um, the rails that it rides up and down on the extrusion with. And we've got four steppers. These are hefty guys inside of here. We have the base hardware pack. The heated bed pack. We have the top electronics here. And here's what we've all been waiting for. The duet board with connectors. So if you're not familiar with the Rostock 3.2, as I go through these, let me talk about that just a tad. Uh, the Rostock 3.0, or version 3.0, was CME CNC's flagship printer. The 3.2 is an upgrade to that, the 3.2 being uh, kind of a play on words to 32-bit, hence the duet board. They've also upgraded these steppers to 0.9 steps versus 1.8 steps. Um, they've upgraded the hot end to their new HE300 hot end and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I'll have a link down below. If you're not familiar with this printer, go check it out on CBCNC's site. The kit is going to be a blast to build, and I'm going to walk you through every step of it here. So moving into this bag, we have a... It looks to be the uh, injection molded base, the heat bed with Mr. Blinky eyes, and we have our borsilicate glass top surface. I'm going to put all of these back in here for now. set this over here back out of the way and I'm going to set these all off to the side for now. And we'll take a look at our next box here which looks like it opens this way. This is our power supply. Note on the power supply, if you're in the US, make sure you set it to the 110 volt setting on the side. If you're outside the US, make sure you set it to 230. Note that it, or 220. Note that it does switch in the 220 position, so you do want to move that if you're in the US. Bad things will happen if you do not. Let's take a look at this box and see what's in here. Okay, this looks like all of our injection molded pieces that go with this. And, yep, frame parts kit 
here. So we're going to keep that together. We'll set this aside as well. And we'll open this last box. Now on this last box that's uh, taped up very well, there is an Allen key at the top. Uh, I'm sure we'll find out what specifically that's for and why it's different than other Allen keys when we get into the instruction manual. So I'm just going to leave that taped to the top for now so that it does not get lost. And we'll take a look in this last box here. have more tape. Aha! This is our HE280, or I'm sorry, HE300 hot end, <coughs> or SE300, excuse me, the SE300 hot end here. With It's pre-built this time and it has the new style uh, blower fans that attach to it. This uses a standard M6 thread so that you can use the CME CNC nozzles or you can replace them uh, with like an Olsen Ruby or something of that nature. This is all pre-assembled, pre-built and ready to go. So all you do is pop it on during the build and plug in your connectors through here and here. So I'm guessing that Allen wrench is for the thermistor cartridge right here. All right, so we're going to set that back aside. Um, I'm also guessing the reason that they include an Allen wrench is most of the hardware on the CME CNC's is imperial, it's inches, um, and that set screw may be metric, which could be why they're including that. But either way, it looks to be the matching one. So that's it, we have all of our pieces out. Now, as you may have noticed as I was unwrapping, each of these bags, it's very difficult to see that on camera, but each of these bags has a parts list in it. So the next thing that we would do is we would go through and open up each of these bags, compare the contents with the list that is supposed to be included. You might need a magnifying glass because the text on some of these is very small, but after you compare all of the parts and make sure that you have everything, that's where we'll go into the next bit video where we'll start the assembly. Okay, so that concludes part one of the CME CNC Rostock V3.2 build series. Before you come back next time, we will have removed the paper from the melamine laser cut sheets, save you the boredom of that, and I will have verified all of the parts in each bag matches the bill of materials. Again, if you order the printer and you find anything missing, reach out to CME CNC right away so that they can ship you replacement parts. It's always good to check that you have everything before you start the build. Usually what I will do is I will 3D print little disposable bins or I'll use egg crates or something of that nature so I can separate all of the parts and the screws and the nuts and bolts out um, by size and by install step to make it easier. So we'll see you next time. Don't forget to check the links for See Me See down below if you're interested in picking up this printer or if you want to learn more about it. And we'll see you next time on Practical Printing. Aloha.